Hey everyone, welcome to episode 7. So today we're just going to be uh, tying up some loose ends. So let's go into the anime class first of all. And uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to detect when the target has died so that we can stop chasing the target. Um, so to do that we'll use the living entity on death event we created earlier. So uh, let's get a reference to the living entity component of our target, which we can call target entity. So uh, down here where we actually find our target, we can say target entity is equal to target component, and we just get the living entity component. Then if we create a little void method, um, let's call it on target death, then we can just subscribe that method to the on death event over here. So target entity dot on death plus equals on target death. Great, so uh, if, we, if we now create a bool called has target, we can say once the target dies, we no longer have a target, so that equals false. And we can also set our current state equal to state.idle, since the enemy will now have nothing to do. All right, uh, let us not assume um, that an object exists with the tag player. Uh, since, of course, the player might have already died by the time that this enemy spawned into the spawned into the game. So let's first do a check if this uh, if this player object exists. So we can say if that's not equal to null, only then will we go ahead and execute this block of code. All right, and we can say once we found the target, has target is now equal to true. Okay, so that's nice. Um, we can use this has target variable in a few places. For example, in the update method, we don't need to check for attacks and all that sort of uh, thing if we don't have a target. So only do this if has target. And also in the uh, in the update path coroutine, uh, we were saying while target is not equal to null, and it's uh, much more elegant to just say while we have a target. Okay, great. So the next thing we want to do is to actually take damage from our target uh, sort of during the attack. So um, we'd want to take damage at the point where the enemy reaches the attack position. So that will be when interpolation is equal to 1. And uh, as defined by our little equation over here, that will be when percent reaches a half. So let's create a bool has applied damage, so we can keep track of that, we can set that to false initially, and we'll say if the percent is greater than or equal to a half, and we've not yet applied damage, then first of all we say has applied damage now equals to true, and uh, we'll want to say target entity dot, and we want to take a hit from our target, but uh, the problem is the take hit method is asking for damage, which we can give it, but it's also asking for a raycast hit variable, which uh, since we're not raycasting, we can't actually supply. So uh, let's go into the take, uh, into the iDamageable interface, and let's create another method. I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to call this void take damage. And this is basically going to be a simplified version of take hit. It's going to ask for damage, but it's not going to ask for a raycast hit variable. So in Unity, of course, we're going to get uh, errors because living entity doesn't implement this new method. So we can say public void take uh, take damage. This takes in a float damage. And uh, we can basically just cut all of this code from here, put that in there. And the take it method can now essentially redirect to take damage and pass in the damage. Um, you might wonder what's the point of this take it method now that it's just simply redirecting to take damage. Uh, so later on we'll do some stuff here with the uh, with the hit variable. So uh, for example, we could use the raycast hit variable to detect the point at which the projectile hit the enemy, and then uh, we could um, instantiate a a particle effect at that point. So. Uh, this, uh, this take it method will still be useful later on. All right, so let's go into the enemy and uh, we can now say target entity and instead of take it, we'll just use the take damage method and we can pass in 
damage, which is a variable we haven't created yet. Let's go up and do that. Float damage, I'll set this equal to one for now. And uh, let's, let's test if that's working. So I'm gonna go into my player. Um, I think I gave him a starting health of 10. I'm just gonna change that down to three so he dies a little bit quicker. One hit, two hits, three hits and we're dead. So that's working nicely and uh, the enemy is not giving us any errors, so it looks like we've handled the, the sort of target death case correctly. So that's nice. Um, the next thing I'd like to do is uh, when, we're, when we're shooting, um, our, our bullets sort of just carry on forever. Uh, so let's go into the projectile class. Uh, where's that? Over here. And uh, let's Let's specify a lifetime, float, lifetime, say give it a lifetime of maybe, I don't know, three seconds, and then if we create a start method, we can just say destroy, we want to destroy this game object after its lifetime has expired, so now if we shoot some bullets, in a couple of seconds we should see all of those disappearing from the hierarchy, so that's working. Um, Okay, so one problem at the moment with our projectile raycast collision detection is that if the projectile starts inside of an object, um, it won't actually register that collision since that's just how raycasts work. So for example, if, if an enemy comes close to me and I'm shooting, these projectiles are being spawned inside of the enemy and they're just continuing out the back with, uh, without doing any damage. So to fix this, let's go into our projectile class and uh, we want to start off by just seeing if we're inside of any colliders. So we can do that by using the overlap sphere method. So we get an array of colliders. We can call this maybe our initial collisions. And this is equal to physics.overlap sphere. So this just asks for a position. So that would be the position of our projectile, transform.position. It wants a radius, which can, uh, can just make small, something like 0.1, and then we can also give it our collision mask. So now we've got a array of all the colliders that our projectile is intersecting with. So we can say if the initial collisions dot length is greater than zero, so if we are actually colliding with anything, then uh, we'll take damage on the first one and uh, destroy the projectile. So we, we basically want to use the on hit object method, but this is asking for a raycast hit. Um, so let's make a alternate version of this method, void on hit object that takes in simply a collider, which we can call C. Um, and this will basically do the same thing as the on hit object method, except here we say C.get component and Instead of using the take hit method, we use the take damage method that we set up earlier. Okay. So over here we can just say um, on hit object and we can just give it the first thing it collides with. So initial collisions zero. Now this should be working. Cool, that's much better. Um, one last thing uh, that, that's sort of a bit troubling about our uh, collision detection at the moment is that if, for example, we've got an enemy and a bullet and say, dung, 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 here's, here's one frame, and in this one frame, the enemy moves slightly forward, overlaps the, uh, overlaps the bullet. Now the raycast is once again starting from inside the enemy and it's not going to detect the collision. So what we want to do to solve this is, uh, at the moment, the length of our, of our ray is exactly the distance of how far the, uh, of how far the projectile is moving in that one frame. But we actually want to add a little bit onto that to, comp to compensate for the fact that the enemy is also moving. So let me delete both of those. Um, create a float over here. We can call this um, I'm never sure what to call this variable. I usually go for skin width, which is a slightly weird name, I know. But um, say set that equal to 0 
And then when we check our collisions, we say that the length of our ray is move distance plus this skin width variable. Okay, and uh, now even if the enemies are moving at high speeds, that, uh, that collision detection should work fine. And if, if, it's, if it's not working fine, if the enemies are moving really fast, um, you can always just increase that skin width variable and it will fix the problem. Cool, so that's most of the odds and ends tied up. In the next episode, we'll start uh, generating our levels. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to be pretty fun. So see you then. Cheers.